We're recording. Yeah. All right. Is that recording? Yeah. We own. All right. Atos Light Podcast, baby. Most authentic, most organic podcast out here. <laughs> Man, lo está yendo bien because we rented out a whole Airbnb for us. <laughs> That's crazy. Hey, hey, you know, when you have a great team, bro, everything's going good. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. You got to do it. You got to do, do it sometimes. This yeah, is well, nice. You got to splurge a little. You got to splurge a little. We're going to throw a little flyer party. So uh, BYOB, respect the pad. <laughs> respect the pad. Respect the pad. Respect the pad. $10 at the door, free before 10 I thought it was a 20 <laughs> I thought it was 20 Who's Who's it? 20 at the door, come on. I'll keep it. I'll keep it. We're, we're, no, you know we're at we, the valley. We're we, at the valley. We, we give back it. to the people. Yeah, so, we, you know, yeah. we got to keep it a little budget friendly. Ladies free before 10? Ladies free before 10. Guys are 20 bucks. Don't guys, say less. Guys, <laughs> if you guys walk in with two girls, you're free too. Mm-hmm. We got you. You know, respectful. Respectful. Okay. Respectfully okay. though? Never mind. I won't finish that <laughs> sentence. <laughs> Man, but we back one more time. I, just, I always love when we're back in the studio on the mics like in our control setting just because we get to one get out the good content as everybody sees right now the background the lights shout out to our guy raul for putting us on that's right he brought the mm-hmm. s log three bro we're color grading this Whatever. 10 bit 10 bit also we're capturing all the colors for you guys he brought the what sun he out said. for us <laughs> what, what he said, said. What the, he budget, said. the budget is budgeting the budget, is budgeting. Oh, the budget is say. budgeting but we're recording this you know day before one of the biggest moments of our ATTL career. So, as you guys can see, the background lights, we kind of have it set up to, it's matching. It might it might give a little hint. It might give a little hint. Just so, you got to go look at, look at Instagram. The if yeah. you know, you know. You got to look at Instagram to know what we're talking about. And if you kept up already, we posted it on our story. So, if you don't, you got to go and check it out because we're going to mention it right now. Mm-hmm. We're here for one thing, one thing only. That's to get talking. Let's get to Thanks yapping. To the, nah. Thanks to the card game. Thanks to Pepe's favorite. Pepe and Jose's favorite thing to do is <laughs> get yapping. Yeah. Why of course. Scared, of course. No, I'm ready. You ready? No, I'm ready. Game up. up. Game on. Up. I have a lot to say. Do you? Maybe. Shit. What is Maybe. It? You can talk. You can talk the whole time if you want. <laughs> so, Jack, we know you can <laughs> talk. Don't because Jack Jack has enough uh, mobility to <laughs> scoot forward and back from the couch. I will be making the decisions here. Okay. <laughs> I will be making the decisions. So each... This card came comes with a roll of dice. Roll of dice. Different colors. Each color is a different category. And depending on the color it lands, that is the category that we're going to pick. Correct. All right? I still don't know what the W in the middle means. Wordable. It is w for... Oh. Wordable. W's in the chat. W's in the chat. That's w's what it means. Nah, it's the nah, W's nah, in the, the chat. It's, it's I don't wordable. say. It's just... It's just right. me. It's just for sorry. everybody wondering, the card game, what's it called, Pepe? Wordable. <sighs> it's a great card game. Different category. So main colors, but in all the different colors, there are subcategories in there. So it's exciting. This so will keep again, you busy for days. You're going to, whatever color it lands on, I'll pick the card and then we'll go through there. But we all got to answer the question. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's go. Let's do this. <gasps> Yellow. Yellow. Let's pick... Joy. What's it got? Ooh. Oh, joy. On. Okay. Joy. Right, we'll pass the cards <laughs> next to Jose. His favorite topic. so joyful right now. <laughs> All right. What guilty pleasure brings you joy? Ooh. Oh. I don't think we've ever answered that. What guilty pleasure brings you joy? Anybody off the top of their head? Dang. Bad rotting. Oh. <laughs> he said that with his whole chest. Like, like uh, just, just sitting in your bed, going on TikTok, and just doing nothing. I just being antisocial. Okay. Okay. Like okay. What I did last night. <laughs> you know, ten hours of sleep, but I'm in my bed. I'm just on TikTok. Can't relate. Just not texting nobody. Can't? can't relate. What's yeah, your? What's your? We're out and about. Nah, they were resting up. <laughs> we're resting up. Big day. A guilty, Big day. a guilty, guilty pleasure. pleasure. Guilty pleasure. You know what? Apparently, they didn't get their giggles out. We got it. No worries. No worries. Go for it. Apparently. Go for it. That's so fucking rude. <laughs> They're so rude. Dang. Jack, Jack, go for no, it. No, give us, give us yours. No, you were about to answer. I wasn't. I'm just <laughs> still trying to process something. <laughs> the brain process is not processing. All right. A guilty pleasure that I have is being a couch potato. Yeah. Putting on a movie that I already watched like 10 times. Dude. 
Yeah. And literally just end up either falling asleep or just being on my phone. No me molesten, no me hablen, no me beaten. Okay. Porque si voy. Yeah, almost like yours is couch rotting then. Couch rotting? Couch yeah. rotting. Yeah, it'd it be like that sometimes. I think my guilty pleasure is literally scrolling the internet, my social media. I'll say it. I'll say it with my chest. I like scrolling my own stuff. That's and right. I like watching my own stuff, too. I'll watch my own stories and my own posts. And I'll be like, dang, she did it again. Oh, I'm entertaining. <laughs> I just like what? I'm just this like saying, all right, well. Everything. <laughs> it's my guilty pleasure. Mine's just treating myself. <laughs> Honestly, if I'm being honest. Is what? Treating myself. I go out. I want it. I buy it. And guess what? <laughs> it brings me joy in the moment. And then when I look at that statement, I'm like, shit. <laughs> Brother, you deserve I that. I still go guilty. You deserve that. Deserve. If no one's going to treat you like that, you treat yourself. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. But he is taking applications. If, you guys, <laughs> if y'all want to spoil me. He wants to be spoiled. For, this is, for the holidays. Yes. Yeah, send, it's okay. Send I'm, it not, I'm not that picky right now. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> Times are tough. Times All are right. rough. Like, okay, ready? Whatever it lands on, you got to pick. All right. The, you got to. Okay, hold on. Hey, wait. Oh, what, what, what did oh, it land on? Lost oh, it. We lost, lost it. it. Oh, man, you guys. I had one job. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay, hold we on. Lost I'll do it. it. We, I'll lost do it. it. we lost it. We lost it. Shit. You might have seen something. You might have seen something. Read it on. Read it on. You can't look at this. What color? It's like gone. It's Shit. gone. To infinity. No way, I had one job. <laughs> Heavy on. No way it rolled that far, bro. Yeah, it's up there. Going to a vent or something? Yeah, I know. Fuck. <laughs> I want to move this real quick. <laughs> I'm just a girl. Jesus Dang. Not, trust me, bro. It's, it's not. <laughs> Here, I'll get it. You got it? All right. Maybe. Sorry. Sorry. I got short hands. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. It, was, it was a strong hand. <laughs> okay. W. Red. W's. Oh, W's in the chat. Oh, man. <laughs> memories. Oh, okay, okay. Side note, Memories by Debbie Guetta is a good song, too. It's a high school song. Yeah. What do you hope people remember most about you? Not that one. Yeah. Anyone first? <sighs> remember the most. Anybody? I remember. Uh, I mean, I'll. <laughs> 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 I'll answer first. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll remember myself too. Um, <laughs> I would, that was deep. That was deep. I would hope that people remember me as a positive and impact, impactful person, meaning I contributed to something positive for them. Like I want to be able, I want to be remembered that I'm the person that I was able to give some sort of advice, help, or just help them along their way, um, and just be, you know, memorable. I hope that people remember the way I made them feel. And in a sense that like, oh, every time I was around Jack, like it was always fun, it was always exciting, it was always something like I made them feel some type of way, hopefully in a positive way, but that's what I hope people remember me. Bye. Oh, right, next. Damn. No, I just wanna be remembered for being kind. I think that's what I care the most about. I think, uh if one thing people to remember me by is that I tried and that I tried to be the best, the best version of myself to help and bring smiles to those people that needed, that needed it during that time. But that kept going no matter how hard, no matter how dark the days were, no matter how many clouds were over our heads, but that we tried. And I think that's like the biggest thing because I think a random question out of this, um, I think just because of this question, it kind of brings it up to my head, but, like, have you guys ever thought about, like, death? Or, like, does it scare you? Um, I don't think it scares me. Um, I think that 
like, I think God has a plan. Mm -hmm. And if it's my time to go, then it's my time to go. I lived what I had to live. Like, I don't, but I'm not afraid. Like, I don't think that anything is, I mean, it's scary to think because just, you just never really know what happens. But I feel like if I was to die, let's say tomorrow, like, I feel like I've, I've, I've lived what I needed to live, you know? Yeah. Does it scare you guys? I feel like my perspective has changed with death. Like, before, it will be more of a selfish way, I guess. Like, oh, like, if I leave, if I go, no one's going to remember me. Or if I go, like, all this pain and suffering is going to end and whatever. But now it, I kind of think of the, the flip side of it as if, like, say one of my loved ones did that. I would be suffering, and I don't want my loved ones to be suffering or it's just sad because I left, yeah. right? So now I treat it. Yes, I, I, I fear death because I don't want to cause pain to anybody else yeah. to leave the people um, who, one, depend on me. Or as silly as it sounds, like my, my athletes have a me coming up. What if I die tomorrow? Like who's going to do the program? Like <laughs> as silly as that sounds, right? Yeah. But I just don't want to leave people like behind because they depend on me or they care about me. So that, I guess my shift in the perspective of death has changed. With that. And me personally, I don't think I fear death itself. I think what I fear is not accomplishing, I guess, what I want to accomplish before death, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I want to set up my family well to where, obviously, if I were to leave whenever it is, like, they'd be okay without me. I think that's what scares me. Yeah. How do you feel? I feel that. What about you? Um, <clears throat> I think it does. I think as a parent... You know, leaving this world and leaving your kids behind, not knowing, you know, what life would bring. Because growing up, you know, we're, we're learning the hard way as much as we got told what may happen, what may not happen. You know, we're learning the hard way. And I feel as a parent, you try to protect your kids. And you know what happens when you're not here? Who protects them the way you know how, the way you could? So I think before, I was like, yeah, you know what, si, si mañana me lleva. It is what it is. I, I lived a great mm -hmm. life. But now it's like, man. It's I, different. I don't want to like, no yeah. no yeah. I think like, if. Please yeah. let me stay. Like, I battle some days, but I want to live. The world I think is that's tough. the scary part. See. Being in that in between of, oh, I don't want to be here. And no, never mind. I want to be here. And I want to be able to see this and see, see this through. So I think it's that, <clears throat> that perspective change of today's hard, but. Hey, tomorrow might be so much better that you're gonna want to be here longer, and you want to mm -hmm. be able to see it. Like, <clears throat> I can't tell you what it looks like at 50 years old if I never made it, but I want to, and I want to, I want to, I want to live it to be able to tell that story of how life changed throughout the journey, and how great it was, and you know how difficult it was at certain times. But because we made it, now we get to tell the journey and tell the story. Mm -hmm. You know, so kind of a little redirect of that question, but no. So now you're throwing the dice. No, and you're choosing this. this. Don't I, lose uh, the dice. I, I thought that was a card. <laughs> All right, blue. We're just gonna go with that one. Ooh. All right. All right. Accept it. What is the most rewarding thing about getting older? Heaven. Like I'm the youngest one here, so I'll answer that just real quick. Just uh, being able to give back to my parents not as much as I can yet. But being able to give back here and, here and there, you know, obviously as a kid, you don't have a job, mm -hmm. so you can't really do anything like that. But now that you have a job and like getting some money, you're able to give back, you know. Yeah. The, the most rewarding thing about getting older is feeling proud of myself. You know, uh, being young, being a little kid dreaming and wishing, like as kids, I want to be older because I want to be able to do so many different things, drive mm -hmm buy things, live on my own, and it gets scary <laughs> growing yeah. up. But, you know, if I if I can make my younger self proud because of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it, you know, I think that's the most rewarding thing. I'm able to look back at that young, timid, um, very, I would say, like, very shy kid that was very scared of being out there and being judged to becoming this person that, you know, I feel is strong I feel is strong-minded, confident in himself, you know, like I would make my younger self proud of, dude, like I get it. You may not mm -hmm. li like yourself right now. You may not 
feel cool. You may not feel like you fit in, but I promise you, like, as you get older, you're going to change and it's going to be better. But you got to keep going. Don't don't change how you are, which is very outgoing, very, like, you want to push yourself for better and make your parents proud. Keep going because look who you're going to become. And I think just having that um, acceptance of looking that person in the mirror and loving who that person is in front of it, and it's very hard to do that sometimes, but, I mean, if you can't even stand to look at yourself or feel proud of yourself, then you got to change something. So, you know, accepting life, mm-hmm. accepting who you are. And if you don't like it, you know, change it. Yeah, I think that dale, dale, I think that brings I do because I was thinking it kind of took me to my my answer. I think the most rewarding thing getting older is like appreciating the little moments mm-hmm. um, like just last because life can get so hectic and life yep. can get so fast and you get it you know, hustled and bustled and doing all this stuff. But like last week or just this week, I was in Napa with my mom and my sister. And it was the little things like waking up in the morning, having breakfast with my mom, my sister, like little things like that where like I look at it and I'm like, dang, like we love to complicate things so much. Yeah. Like it's really not that complicated. Like life <laughs> is very simple. Yeah. And like, like, appreciating moments like having coffee and breakfast with my sister like having a few minutes with my grandparents like stuff like that where I'm like this is the rewarding part for me because everything else like you know I still have so much to go after but like these are the little things that are just worth wild you know what I mean and I think that comes with age as getting as getting older and time goes by and I think at least for me the most rewarding thing about getting older is going through life and experiencing things first that whenever, let's say, one of my loved ones is going through it, I can offer advice. Mm. Like, they don't have to go through it, and I can avoid some of the hardships because I already went through it, you know? So would you say, like, when there's a hardship coming, you would rather go through it first? Of course. To pave the way easier for your loved ones? Yeah. I mean, if that's something that I got to go through to make their life a little bit easier than do you feel like you, you're fulfilled when you do that like you're living a purpose like it gives you yeah. purpose to be living and like to be here because i yeah, know of sometimes course. it's a little hard to sometimes it's a little hard to want to stick around right yeah i think we've yeah. all experienced that like wanting to stick around yes. but when you can help the people closest to you and the ones you love the most it makes life worthwhile at least give them like a little boost to hey this is hard but i'm gonna help you out and, you know, it's, uh, I think the same thing. It goes back to, you know, I have a purpose. And if my purpose was to go through all these hard things to make your life a little easier, so be it. Y siempre sales aprendiendo algo de whatever situation. Yeah, exactly. So, like, it really just depends on perspective. But, like, you know, you know. All right. You know. You know. You know. Pink? Como mayenta. Mayenta. It's pink. No, no like no, the third magenta. one. There that one. Hand it to Peps. Damn. Pepe. Let's see. Let's see what we get. Don Pepe. The big Pepe. Success. <laughs> oh. Oh. What makes you feel successful? Ooh. Being able to feed my loved ones and give experiences to my loved ones, my kids, my friends, my parents. That, to me, is success. It's not the... The money part, obviously, it helps. That's mm-hmm. priority, right? Because without money, you can't get... To, you can't live uh, experiences. You can't have them. Of course. Um, stability. But the biggest thing of success for me is I'm able to live out these big experiences, big dreams, and even the simplicity of having what we want when we want, but being able to do that with all my loved ones around me, you know, as a team, as a unit, as a parent, is being able to, like, if your kid wants a happy meal or a toy, and, and I understand some parents don't have it like that, but as of now that I am able to have it, you know, I'll give him what he wants. You know, same thing when we go out, we have our fun, we travel, and we want something, why not have it now? One thing we'll never be able to take when we, when we leave is our own money. Once we're down, the only thing we can put in that casket is the bag of clothes that we have, Shoes, whatever we're wearing, but el dinero no se va a llevar. So I'll be able to leave everybody with something, but being able to like we experienced so much, and we did it while we're all, we're all here. Yeah. 
That was mine. Sorry. <laughs> no, I mean, copy <laughs> and paste. Copy, copy and, and paste. paste. <laughs> copy I and think paste. success can also, for me, I'm thinking right now, like saying you're going to do something and actually doing it. Yeah. Um, whether it be big or small, but I feel like a lot of times people can throw out um, goals or say they're going to do something and they don't even get to, you know, halfway mark. So whether finishing whatever project you said you were going to do, whether it was good or bad, the fact that you finished it is already a success. It's a step in the right direction. Yeah. It's a little my take. All right, speed round. We're just going to roll the dice and then mm-hmm. we'll answer it. And one of us will answer it. Or the person who chose the tar- card will answer it and then we'll just Period. keep it rolling today. Because we've got 10 minutes. Let's roll this. Let's roll make it this. Boom, boom, boom. Speed round. Desire. Oof. What do you desire most? Free time, recognition, or money? Oh. Oof. Ooh. I think we know the answer for you in that case. All of the above. D, all of the above. Um, if Out of those three, I desire most free time. Free time to be able to spend with my kids. That's that's the one thing. Again, with money and everything, it's going to help. But I just want time. Mm-hmm. I wish I could have more time. But I think with everything happening, with everything rolling, I think that's the one thing that we all wish we had, which is I wish I had more time in the mm-hmm. day. I wish I had more time to spend. I wish I had more time to be there. But, you know, hopefully and hopefully soon I get to have that. Because I, I, I need it. I want it. I desire it. Because as parents will understand where they're only they're only little once and to be missing certain things yeah, it's it's not a good feeling not a good feeling as a parent but if i could all three but if i gotta <laughs> choose one free time i just want time yes i know i feel like money doesn't buy happiness but money buy, buys time and the time equals happiness yeah yes, i know oh. oh pink pink well i yeah Let it all on black. So look at Kaiga, look at Kaiga. Kaiga. You, same color as crumble cookie. (laughs) Sponsor us. Sponsor, please and thank you. (laughs) What is something most people do not know about you? Mm. Uh, You love crumble cookie. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I don't know. That I have a half sister. A lot of people think it's just me and my brother. But I have oh. a, another sibling. I didn't know. I didn't know. That. I didn't know that. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> We're like, wait, what? We're all shocked. We're like, what? There you go. <laughs> wait, he that said, was a shocker round, for hold up. sure. <laughs> he was like, speed round, but I'm going to jump a bar. <laughs> He's like, but that's it. <laughs> oh. Oh, she's okay. traveling in the Well, because I'm just like, dang, I, know, I don't think I've ever been asked this question. What are three things that make you feel hopeful? Oh. Okay, I think things that make me feel hopeful is um, lately things have been working out in a funny way, but they've been working nonetheless, so that makes me hopeful. Um, Hopeful. Dang. Also, man, this one was a good one. Um, it wasn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> it's making you think way too much. I, it, it it is. It is. Well, because I'm trying to I'm trying to understand. Like, dang, hoping, hoping, hoping. I um, for me, hoping. I don't. I can't. Maybe it's just like. Are you just not a? I'm not a hopeful, hopeful person? person. I'm not because yeah. like I can hope for a lot of things, but I'm more of an act towards it. Because hoping, yes, I hope for a lot of things, but if I don't put my ass to work, it's not going to happen. So like. I am not very hopeful. I'm just kind of like, okay, this is what I want to get done. This is what I need to get done. And this is what I'm going to do to get there. But like, I don't, it might sound like toxic, but I'm like, I don't sit around and I'm just like, I hope that this happens. I hope that that happens. I'm just kind of like, whatever ends up happening was for me. Yeah. And that is what was meant for me. Um, I think that's how you said it. It's like, if you can hope, but if you're not acting upon it, yeah, like we so, can sit here and be like, man, I hope this works, man. I hope I hope all this is going to pay off. <laughs> I think that's why it was so hard for yeah. me because I'm like, I don't sit around and I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope, I hope, I hope. Now I'm like. Well, what about the things like work. you can't really work. work? You can't really work at. 
Well, that in that case, I think if it's for me, it's for me. And if it's not, I'm not going to stress about it. That's how I feel about things that I, you know, don't have you can't, control like, yeah, over. You control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Washington quote, if with a dream without uh, work is just a dream. Yeah, you have like, to, like put action into it. Like so, I, I could sit here and be like, yeah, I I dream that this one day will hit big, but if but, consistently we don't work, consistently we don't show up, then we will sit on that I hope stage. But it's like, all right, when are you yeah, gonna I move? Don't, when are you gonna move out of that out of that stage itself? So it's just like no such thing as luck. It's just hard work and preparation meeting opportunity. And yeah, like I'm a I'm a fast actor. I'm like, okay, if I want something. This is what I got to do. And then I'm on it. So we're going to make it happen. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Bye, bye. Damn, we can skip mine if y'all want. Mm-mm. Damn. Absolutely not. Like, you got the same color. Damn. <laughs> he said, that? hell no. I said, hell no. <laughs> if you were to die tomorrow, what would you regret the most? Dying, <laughs> dude. I regret dying, and only because I haven't accomplished, like I said in one of the earlier questions, setting my family up. So I think I'd pretty much regret my whole life because I didn't do what my ultimate goal was. What would you miss the most? What would I miss the most? My family, my family, and I mean I can't say one specific person, but yeah. Everybody holds a different, like, place in my heart that just my family. I would miss them the most. Like, that's it. That was okay. speed round, that was That was speed round. Do we have time for Come here, fool. You already said, you already started, I don't know. Come here, dog. Uh, you guys Come here. Hurry up, dog. It was a plan all, the, all along. Come here real quick. You got to answer at least. You got to answer, answer one. You got to answer one. At least. Oh, we're on. We're on. Yeah, we're yeah, on. We're on. We're on. We're on. Oh, yeah, yeah. this is going to be fun. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> so now we got well, the man. Okay. Right, oh, okay. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. You know, I think everybody in our team is holds their, their own weight and everybody aligns at the right time. So for everybody think like seeing our level of content, I just kind of just skyrocketed real quick. <laughs> it wasn't because we were doing anything like we've stayed consistent in what we've done. But we brought on an amazing fucking human being that just, when we asked, he came and everything just fit in and everything has aligned and these big projects are aligning with us too. So everybody meet our new videographer, Raul, baby. My guy, where are you from? For everybody know, donde creciste, you know, para que sepan. What's going on? Um, my name is Raul. Um, I like to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, from Los Angeles, uh, my family is from uh, Michoacan and uh, Jalisco, Guadalajara, there and uh, yeah. <laughs> he said, it's, it's just he said it's my first time here. So <laughs> it's my first time here. Yeah. Raul, Raul's watched our podcast before. We met in San Diego. Shout out to my guy, your social media, Jose. So you know how we do it, bro. We, we all we ask is just be transparent, be honest, and just one little question. Just one little just question. One little question. question. And this is like not planned. On my end. <laughs> this is not planned. <laughs> well, we all got. We right always here. had a plan. <laughs> you got blue. You got to. You got to pick. You got to pick up blue. Right. I can't shuffle with second cards from the line. <laughs> <laughs> never go to the casino. <laughs> never work at a casino. Ooh. Damn, you guys get deep, huh? Yeah, we do. <laughs> All the way in. Right, we so don't. Someone says, uh, what keeps you connected <laughs> to your inner child? Ooh. Yeah, that was. Um, well, that's an obvious one for me. It's uh, being creative. I think uh, I think the inner child and everybody's being creative. And I think what happens uh, when you get older or for some people when they become adults, they lose that creativity. If you look at kids, they're constantly uh, being creative. I mean, th their imagination is, is amazing. You just... You, you look at them sometimes and they're kind of doing their own thing but if you watch them and you pay attention it's it's pretty uh it's pretty fun to watch because they could turn like the the most simplest things into into something like amazing and fun um so they're like very creative they whatever it is it could be like a pencil and it's an airplane to them or you know um there's this movie i watched too i forgot what it was called uh 
I can't remember it. Esa, esa. But but, esa. It ta- but it talked about uh, your inner child, and and that was one of the things that the, that movie uh, reference was just you know stay creative, um, and you know this is the reason why I like to do what I like to do with uh, video and photos and things like that because it keeps me creative. It keeps me uh, you know it keeps my mind going. So I think my inner child is just staying creative. <sighs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> right. Drop the mic. Bars off the rim. For real. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we got to give him one more. One more. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Just so, you know, for people got to know him a little better. Fred. Oh, she chose it. Oh, she chose it. it. Oh, she, she said, oh, I, I, I did. did. She said, I run this. Okay, name a person who has made a major impact on your life. Woof. All right. Um... In all honesty, I would say uh, my wife. I think uh, she's made a huge impact in my life since the day she stepped into my life. Um, I mean, from just giving me the the kids that I got, I got five kids, so we're in deep. (laughs) 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 Literally deep, huh? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so we're we're definitely outnumbered. But, uh, I mean, aside from that, uh, you know, um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, impact that's been done there. I feel like we're yin yang, um, so uh, she's brought a whole side uh, to my life that I didn't have, um, you know. So I think the the, the person that's brought the biggest impact uh, would be my wife, yeah. And then uh, of course my kids, um, I'm gonna throw that one in there too. So my kids and my family, you know, my family, my uh, immediate family has brought the biggest impact. Yeah, that's what I would say. What What did your wife exactly like change in your life, like before your kids came? I would say I think I. Uh, I would, I would consider myself like being more self-centered and more, uh, I think just self-centered and, and I would say just cold-hearted in a sense because um, I wouldn't really focus on certain things. And I think like she she brought this different joy to my life um, and also, you know, just the enjoyment of family itself. Because I feel like, again, I think I was just really self-centered in certain things, uh, which is good because, you know, I mean, sometimes you need to be self-centered. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you need to, and it helps carry this drive that you have. I still use that, you know, to my advantage at times, but I think there was this whole other side that she had, uh, which was the beauty that I found in her was that, um, she had, she, she loves, uh, she loves with such a big heart. And I feel like that was something that, um, I, I didn't, I wasn't too good at. So, um, she brought that side to me to, to be able to enjoy that because I think that's, that's a huge thing. It helps with connections, relationships, and just. Uh, a lot of things in general, you know, even the connection with your kids, uh, your 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 family, your mom, uh, dad, and stuff like that. So, I would say that, yeah. Damn. Wow. <laughs> All right, I'm out. <laughs> I was gonna say, let's just keep giving them more questions. Giving them more cards. We'll just sit here. We just, we just wanna. That, that was great. How do you how do you even follow up for that for one? For real. Hey, we yeah. weren't recording, guys. I know. Huh? <laughs> Can I imagine. <laughs> Oh man, love. That's man. crazy. Oh, I just love hearing people talk about love when they're in love. You if I'm being honest. And why don't you fall in love? Me? You. No, hombre. ¿Qué te puedo decir? Tenemos una pinche suerte nosotros. No, es que la verdad, you know, I was like, I was out the other day and I was like, wow, it's really rough out here. Like, it's, you can attest. You can attest. The streets in it. It's the not streets? that I don't want to fall in love, it's just. <laughs> Está cabrón. Okay, so Está okay. difícil. Can I hit you with this? Uh, Gotta go to a coffee shop. <laughs> no. <laughs> it, it's the place that you're looking for it. <laughs> well, you know? I'm not looking. That's a, you know, that's what they say. Like, in order to find what you want, you gotta look in places where they're gonna be. Coffee shop, sprouts, target. But if I'm being honest, like I'm not look I'm not like actively oh, searching I see for okay. there's this there is this theory. What? Right? Ran into it, I seen it, and I'm like, we gotta ask. This you searched it. No, no. I, <laughs> stop lying. Is it, is it burnt the, toast? Beauty, the beauty about being on TikTok is when you think about, like, I need to find something, it comes up. It's called the 19th <laughs> Love Theory. Talk about have it. Guess, have you heard about that? No. no. Uh, the man you meet at 19 will be your worst man of your life. The man you meet at 19 is the one who will break your life. He will be the one who will traumatize you forever, and he will change your life for the worse. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's kind of <laughs> true, not true. At my age, 19, I will say I learned a lot during that time. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess I could, I could agree I to that. I think we could take it to like guys and girls. Yeah, 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 for sure. Relationship at nineteen. Go back to your age nineteen. What were you Actually, doing, yeah. relationship wise? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Actually, yeah, yeah. I, it's true. It's I, true. I yeah, I agree, I agree with that. I will now say I'm there bad. was a pivot at nineteen. That would, the, do you, would you guys recognize who you were at that time with that person? Like, would you, like now looking back, you're like, damn, like who the who were you or like, nah? That like, you always been that. Or were you somebody completely different? Like physically wise, mm-hmm. you have just like loving well, wise. I don't think so. I, feel, I felt like I, lo- I loved too hard. I think like I did I, some crazy things at 18, 19. I think at 19, you're a little naive and yeah, you just don't have a lot of experience. And I mean, the person I was then, definitely not the person I am now. But I think at my age, 19, I was so like naive and i believed everything and it was just like si me dicen esto pues yo les creo i'll believe it, believe it. and I, I was just i was so gullible to so many things and i think that um like you love so much you have such a big heart and you don't really haven't gone through many experiences that like now at age you know 31 it's it's a completely different ball game what about you yeah no i think uh you know for everybody listening at this point it's like look back at your 19 year old self if you were in a relationship if you're still with that person amazing how did you guys survive but if you're not with that person who were you then and to who you are now um 19 i I think how jose says it's just at a different point of my life where it's i'm gonna love and i'm gonna love hard and i still do but this was like i'm gonna allow you to cause cause Mm -hmm. all the pain I'm gonna call. I'm gonna let you disrespect me, the relationship, and I'm gonna believe every time you say sorry. So I think now when someone says sorry, I just don't believe it because I'm like, and this person said I'm sorry ten times, right? And she still did it the eleventh time. Yeah. And I'm not using that as an excuse, like for people to come like next. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it broke. I was broken as a human being, as a as a young. Man, I was broken at during that time frame because it's like these are this is supposed supposed to be that person. You're like, man, I'm about to start my adult life. I was like, gonna say that. Like, yeah. I feel like at 19, I had a vision. I was like, this is the one. Yeah. Like, yeah. this is who I'm gonna be with. This is together. my person. I could see a with. whole life with yeah. this person. It's like a but, canon event. Like, yeah, <laughs> but crazy, then let me it's ask true. you this yeah, because I mean, think about it. I have 19. Yeah, that person, you're, you're convinced they're with. They're with you, with your family. They're around your family. Your family's, you guys been together for X amount of time already. And you're, you're experiencing adulthood, going out, dinners. You know, you guys are starting work, college. Mm-hmm. Living together. Living together. <laughs> yeah. Like, so, so many things that, how you said, this is someone, like, dude. I'm like, this is, my this, person. Person. Yeah. this is my person. Yeah. Yeah, I think. And yeah. I'm going to do everything as much as I can in order to survive. And to be with that person, just to later find out. This was never my person. But you got up and you had the strength to like move on. So how do you how do you feel your life would have been played out had you mm-hmm. stayed with that person? How do you followed your intuition and been like, this is my person, I'm gonna ride it. Mm-hmm. I'll ride, you know. I, I believe I in it down? now where if you allow disrespect in your relationship, it's a never ending cycle. They will say sorry and they will fix that. But they will find another way to ruin it once again. And I feel like if you don't set that boundary, if I were to stay with that person, it was as as how we throw up toxic now. Man, that shit was toxic then. You know, there was no respect to one another. There was no throwing out the I love yous. And it never even mattered. Because when you love somebody, you don't do all these hurtful yeah. shit to, you know. So for those people that have gone through that breakup or are experiencing that breakup, as a woman, how do you get over feeling lost, feeling someone that felt too dependent on somebody and they're trying to figure themselves out? Like what, what can how you do you them? get over a breakup? Yeah. Is basically how do you find yourself again? I mean, I think you have to really put yourself a little out of your comfort zone. Um because it can be scary. It can be really scary, but you have to kind of just trust the process, see it through, and think, okay, I don't like how I'm feeling in this certain situation. 
si me quedo aquí, nada va a cambiar. Entonces, I have to force myself to do other things, to get outside of my comfort zone, to do other things, because, like, where I'm at, I'm not happy. And for me, like, as a woman, I would always remember, like, how did that person make me feel? How did I feel in that moment? No, hombre, yo lloré noches y noches, because, like, you know, heartbreak heartbreak whatever and I remember feeling like shit I remember feeling like shit for days going to work and feeling like oh my god my world's gonna end and I hated that feeling and I was like if I continue in this like I'm just gonna keep feeling like this y nunca voy a avanzar entonces I forced myself to just get preoccupied in other things and that's scary because you're just like oh like what is my life going to be like without this person and stuff like that? But I promise you, it gets a whole lot better. It gets say, a whole lot better when you take out the toxicity in it. Would you say it's better? Well, at least one of the things you did was you started doing things that you enjoyed. Exactly. I started doing things for me because I feel like a lot of times in relationships, you kind of, what does this person want to do? And what does that person want to do? And what can I do to make that person happy? Like, I was actually thinking of this today. I was like, you cannot love somebody without loving yourself first. Yeah. Like, you really have to. How can you give something you don't have? Yeah. Like, you it, can't pour into their cup if you have nothing to pour. Yeah. Like, you have to, you have to really figure yourself out yeah, you first know, before. You got to know what you want. You exactly. Gotta, you got to know, understand where they're coming from, too. And you have to have something to offer. You can't just show up to the dining table with nothing to, to give. Exactly. And I think, like, I mean, going back to, like, what do you do getting over a breakup? You have to outweigh the situation. Like, how do you feel with that person most of the time? Is 80% of the time toxicity, fighting, arguing, making you feel like shit, and 20% yeah. is, like, rainbows and butterflies? You, like, you have to see. But I don't think we realize all the bad stuff that they're doing to us until after the breakup, right? Or... At least in my case, like when I was dating, I would uh, kind of like just in the back of my mind or just lie to myself like, oh, they're not doing this. They're not being toxic. Mm -hmm. When deep down, I knew. We tried I think to it excuses. took. Yeah. We you try to, to justify excuses. it. Yeah. yeah like, try to justify all their well, shitty behavior like because moment. you love yeah. them. They're or in a bad moment. They're going to change. Yeah. Or. No, no, we have good moments. We have, we have good moments. <laughs> no, because the moments that you have are amazing. Yeah. Like the yeah. good moments are really good. Yeah. But the bad moments. And that's where you go. You have, you have to ask yourself, do the good outweigh the bad? Yeah. Or are, we, or are you like, just making the excuses? I feel like once you ask yourself that, it's like you already know the answer. You know the answer. Yeah. yeah. You're just you lying to yourself up, at that you're point. Self-recognizing it. It's like yeah. it's over already. <laughs> I, did, it was, I had this conversation the other day where it's just like, I don't want to have a conversation with certain people because they come to you with their problems. And they know the solution to the problem, but they don't want to act upon it. So in a relationship standpoint, uh, they mistreat me, they yell at me, they make me feel little, they disrespect me, guys and girls. And it's like, okay, but what are you doing? Mm. Ah, well, you know, it's just a bad spot. It's under a lot of stress. Oh, with this X, Y, and Z, that's why they're being that way. So I, I, it's, we're going to get better. It's like, bro, it's been a year. It's been two. And it still hasn't been a changed. While. It's still yeah. just as bad, if not worse. Yeah. So it's like, how far do you go to stop making excuses for someone that says they love you, but show you otherwise? And for those people listening in, if you're, at, what, how far do you go? How long do you make excuses for them? And especially, I think when you got to make excuses to your own family to justify their actions. I, I think when you start having those thoughts just in general, like when those ideas start coming up and you're just kind of like, oh, well, maybe I think that's a sign. Maybe it's it could be a sign. Yeah. And I always say, like, if you're afraid to let something go, let it go. Let it go. And if it's really meant for you, it'll make its way back to you. But I feel like a lot of times people are afraid of letting go. And if it doesn't come back. And, and if it doesn't come back, then it wasn't for you. Exactly. There is a, it's going to sound cheesy, bro, but I think oh, got to read it. We love I the cheesy. It. Nah, no way. Stop lying. <laughs> Stop lying. I okay. love cheesy. Nah, no I'm way. Gonna read it. I saw it on TikTok. Again, yeah, it's TikTok. We love yeah, TikTok. We love TikTok. Get ready. I'm going to roll my eyes so hard. I know you are. <laughs> okay, so it says, I got addicted to you so easily. Oh, God. Attracted to you in every single way. 
I care Jesus. about you way more than you think. I care about you more than you realize. I appreciate you more than you will ever know. No words will ever be enough to describe how fantastic you are. And that's me. <laughs> Let me can I, can I send it to real quick? He's a poet now. He came up with that. He's like, I saw oh, this. He wrote it. God. No, I think I'm, you guys never wrote like a letter to like a ex a big I never wrote person. a letter. I'm a big letter person. Like bro. if you guys can like off the top of your head, like what's the last like cheesy message you ever sent someone that like you were really like that you really cared about? I don't do that. Under that cheesy shit. I don't do that. But I the, have gotten okay, letters the, written to me. You're the light. <laughs> you're the sun to my darkened world. No. You sent you that like a week so ago. Sentimental. Sentimental. You sent that are you, to me. Are you? Are we? The, are we on the same boat, Pepe? No. Okay, I don't wait, do wait. that. So, that cheesy shit. That. Okay, so Pepe, way. very anti-loving, and we know this already. What is that? We we know this already. Yeah, of course. Who hurt you so bad that you deny love? <laughs> That 19-year-old relationship, <laughs> that 19-year-old, that actually was like a four-year relationship. So, that relationship. That's what got that's you so cold-hearted? That's me so cold-hearted. But why? Like, what was it? Was it just like repetitive lies? What a was it? A little bit of everything. Uh-huh. And, yeah, it just got to the point where, I mean, okay, it just didn't so work out. In the healing standpoint, what, going back to that 19-year-old self, what do you think you need to hear? Or what you would want it to hear in order for you to, like, kind of heal that aspect of, of like... You could have just love. been avoided if I hadn't been in that relationship. Don't get in that relationship. They're going to break you. What did you need That's to hear? True, actually. From that... What do you need to hear from that person? I don't need to hear nothing from that person. He said, I don't want to hear nothing from that person. You don't, you, don't need that person. It, you don't need it now because you already made amends with your own self. But what it's, like, I feel like for us to apologize, to some, like, we always needed to hear something for that one person... To be able to forgive them completely, but because we never got it, we did it on our own. But man, if they would have said this, it would have changed. Let me ask this: Did she do something to you? Yeah, I've talked about it in previous okay. episodes. Okay, then so yeah. why did you do what you did? There's That's nothing. It. There's uh, nothing. There's nothing that really justifies it. For them well, to so justify it's one of those things where it's like exactly you. like I don't need to hear your apology. Okay. Like I'm good. Your actions already spoke yeah. loud enough for me to understand yeah. what you exactly. wanted. You think she took away a chance of happiness? Oh, for sure, a thousand percent. I think that's what it was. Why'd you do it? You know? And I think that's yeah. what it is. I'm a hopeless romantic, but I'm gonna argue with Pepper too. Like I think when <laughs> someone you care about takes away that opportunity of finding out what real love is yeah, and what that real type happiness of love is, is and real happiness is, and they take it from you to experience it. I think it's kinda it's like how do you how do you trust anybody else again, yeah. you know? Right. When the person you, in a sense, trusted the most did that, it's like, do you want to open yourself up to that type of hurt again? It's a little me, glimpse I'm, of reality. Me, honestly, no. I'm good. I think there are times where I'm like, damn. Like, I want something, yeah, but at the same time, it's like, I don't know, dude. Like, I don't know if I want to open myself up to hurt again. Yeah. So it's easier to just not do it. I, I'm, I'm with you. You can't I'm with get you. Hurt. I think I, cause yeah. like if you same. don't open up, <laughs> you know, you can't well, get hurt if you don't open up. Yeah. And it's also, you have to like really pay attention to who wants to listen because I feel like nowadays, like I have no problem opening up, but I've noticed that like 75% of the people don't really care about like what oh. I want to open up about. So I'm like, if I'm getting already a, an energy that like, you're not really interested, then why am I even going to open up? Yeah, like if I see that you're not really about it, mejor me la ahorro. And I think that's why a lot of people have tough time being able to trust people or to be able to talk about their emotions simply because the times they have confined in people and trusted them with their deepest, darkest emotions or feelings or experiences they some way somehow use it against them down the line. Mm -hmm. So I confided in you, and I told you all this, and you still turn around and use it against me. People like to weaponize. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's just Keep like the secrets and whatever can, it is. How can I open myself up once again when the few times that I did it, where did it Me grow? fue mal. Me fue yeah. mal. Yeah. What's the Why point? would I do it again? And exactly how you're saying, like if I already experienced it, I'm I'm this is who I am because of everything I've ever experienced. So if yeah. I don't open myself up, it's because I already know this may happen. And I know there might be another chance where it may not, but I'm right. just not willing to take that chance anymore. So it takes one person to mess it up for everybody else. But then I have a question for you. So moving forward, what would it take for somebody to 
have you open up to them? Like, what are, what is it? When I know the answer, I'll let you know. <laughs> As of now, I don't know. You're still trying to figure it out? Yeah, I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah, it comes with time. Sometimes it takes, takes Sometimes a it takes mm-hmm. a little bit longer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You let us know. I'll let you know. Don't even worry. Y'all, be the only, <laughs> y'all get the exclusive. So <laughs> you guys, you guys, as, so then you guys as hopeless romantics, like you are, you're, you're open, you're an open book. Yeah. Uh, I think I realized it kind of count, counters like Pepe. The next person isn't responsible for what I've been through, but me being who I am, I'm going to do my best to show you everything that I possibly can. So if this if this works out, great. I I've done my best and we're going at it. And if for whatever reason it doesn't work, I'm not left with the damn. I sh- what if I would have done that, or what what, what if I would have showed her this or done this? It's like yeah, it sucks. We're not here no more. But man, I did everything. And you if, did your part. And if everything that I was able to do wasn't enough, then maybe it just wasn't me, or we were we weren't meant to be together. In this lifetime, you know, I think there's, I, it's a, it's like a give or take. I, there's like a thing of a perfect person. You said lifetime? In a different lifetime. Peace. What's happening? In a different lifetime, there you are, you find yourself with butterflies. Like you and that other person, you find yourself in a different lifetime. And then you say, there you are. What? Like you know that that saying like in a li- in a different lifetime I'll find you. Yeah. And you find each other as a butterfly. And the quote's like there yeah. you are. Oh dang. <laughs> yeah. I think mean, that's that's like one of the a hard like a hard goodbye. It's like, hey, maybe this time around it wasn't our time, but mm-hmm. you know, maybe in another lifetime. Nah, she can stay I, in that lifetime. I don't no, want her you in know that what, another lifetime. I, I understand that quote. I understand it it. because you meet people and you're just like, wow, like they're so amazing. This, this and that for whatever reason, no se da. Right person. Right person. Perfect person, person, wrong time. Yeah. And in this, in that case, you're just like, do you believe in in another life? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect person, wrong time. Yeah. In in another life? Hopefully, you know. Why not this life? Dios no quiso. Dios no quiso. God didn't want it. I, I, Jack Jack said it earlier. Is this if God, if this is for me, God will show me, and if it's not for me, He's gonna take it away. And it's just under trying to comprehend it, even though I don't want it to. But I have to understand that there's a reason why it's not here and it's gone. What's that saying? He heard conversations that I wasn't aware of, and he, I should trust them as much as I don't want to understand them. Why I want this person or why this person should be here. He knows more than anybody, and I got to trust him. As hard as it is, as hard, as hurtful as it is, is this is a reason it's not happening. And again, you can only do so much. And sometimes you come so close to it. You, you, feel, so, like you feel like it's there. Like, yeah. like you, dang, this I, is it. Yeah. That's the most and for algo part. no se da. And that's the most hurtful part. You feel like you're there. Yeah. And you've done everything. You're like, dude, this is good. This it's gonna work. It's like life is you're good like, right now. I'm life living. Is, life is perfect. Rock on. <laughs> and then let's keep it going. Just says, and then for algo, it's like, no. You fucking fuck. You, fu- you fucking fuck. <laughs> and then we end up back in that same place of like that. Um, you know, a hard mindset of why do I open myself up if I'm just gonna keep getting let down? And it's just like, damn. I think, I think of those things as like amores fugaces. Have you ever guys heard of that term? What? Un amor fugaz. Fugazi? <laughs> a mí hablame en español. <laughs> no, un amor fugaz. Un amor fugaz is like a shooting star. So a shooting star lights up in the sky. It's beautiful. It lasts only for a, t- a moment in time. That is an amor fugaz. So it's probably not the person that's meant for you, but it's beautiful. It's bright. It's short. You enjoy it while you can. But then it goes away. And oh, then you see I another one. Stay. Huh? I wanted to stay. Yeah, <laughs> but that's not the point of an amor fugaz. Like, but well, an amor fugaz like, is, is her, fiery. This is her not being in the jar. I'm trying to capture it in the jar and, <laughs> and keep it. They're like, this is her no, not being a hopeless not romantic. No, that's not an amor fugaz. Yeah. Huh? Damn, this is you not being a hopeless romantic. I am, I am not a hopeless romantic, but I think amor fugaces are, they happen. I think, uh, they happen. To end this, this segment of love, 
we start crying. Yeah, we <laughs> I did we had I've said it before and many other podcasts before, but it's just like if you're a loving and caring person, don't let what others did to you ruin what your rest of your life can look like and don't ruin that opportunity for yourself. You're a good person, just change who you're good to. So be mindful and be very uh be very mindful who you give it to because some people will be able to handle your love and take it and actually appreciate it. And then there's some that are just are going to take advantage of it or not be able to protect it the way it should be. So, you know, don't settle yourself for, for people that are going to give you the bare minimum when you know you can give them everything. And it's a struggle for a lot of people that feel like, oh, I'm X amount of years old and I'll never find love again. It's like, no, you will. But when you're ready... And you're willing to give your love to somebody else and open yourself up freely, you know, then that's gonna, you know, land in your land in your arms again. Like you said, like you gotta be able to offer something. Like yeah. you're not gonna show up to a party with nothing. To, like with nothing, then why show up to a relationship with nothing? Yeah. And show up to a party with a twelve pack minimum. <laughs> minimum. You know, even if it's a baby shower, twenty four pack. Maybe some portos if you don't drink. Portos. <laughs> like, Thank you, Jack Jack, for the cheese bowls. Oh. <laughs> but I mean, again, make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. Another good podcast, another great episode. Hey, stay hey. tuned para lo que viene. We'll see you soon. Cosas chingonas se vienen. Chingonas. Yeah. That's right.